Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of The Daily Crow. I'm Chris Phillips of the Spurs Up Show coming to you live. Going to continue the position unit previews, break down the Gamecocks wide receivers going into 2019. Obviously talk about look back at 2018. The receivers for this year, most approved, best overall, give my grade. You guys know the deal. Before we get into all that, this is a broadcast brought to you by our friends always over at SeatGeek. SeatGeek, the best ticket buying app by far, the only one that I use, the only one I'd recommend. SeatGeek has tickets to literally anything and everything. Go download the SeatGeek app right now or go to SeatGeek.com and use the promo code SPURSUP. You're actually going to save $10 off your first purchase. Guys, it's, start, it's time to start buying your Gamecocks football tickets if you haven't done so. Even if you're not buying South Carolina tickets, which I assume if you're watching this, this you are, um, they've got tickets to anything and everything, whether you want NBA, NHL, MLB, NFL coming up, you want to go to any preseason games, concerts, comedy club events, doesn't have to be sports. But especially if you're getting your Gamecocks tickets, go download SeatGeek, go to SeatGeek.com, use that promo code, save some money in the process. They actually rate the tickets for you so you know exactly what you're getting before you click the buy button. You know if you're getting a really good deal, you know if you're getting a steal, you know if you're getting ripped off, so you really have that peace of mind before you click the buy button. So again, go download the SeatGeek app or go to SeatGeek.com, use the promo code SPURSUP, that's S-P-R-S-U-P, to save $10 off your first purchase. All right, like I said, let's get into it, talking about the wide receivers, uh, Gamecocks receivers heading into the 2019 season. Before we look at this year, let's look back at 2018. Um, obviously, we all remember Debo Samuel led all receivers with 882 receiving yards, had 11 touchdowns a year ago, which truly was the number one guy, was the go-to guy for South Carolina and Jake Bentley a season ago. Brian Edwards was the next highest. He had 846 receiving yards, seven touchdowns. Um, some of the bigger storylines of the season, the Ortre Smith injury, I think, played a big role in last year. The way last season went, some of the things that happened with the receiving core, I thought that was a big loss for South Carolina. Obviously, they get him back this year, but it was a huge loss in 2018. And then the drops, that was really the big thing I think everybody wants to talk about or wanted to talk about last year because this is a receiving core that came into 2018 with a ton of hype. I mean, we were talking about, there were people comparing to that receiving core last year to some of the best in South Carolina history. You think of the Alshon Jeffrey, Bruce Ellington, Ace Sanders days. People were comparing that group to the, the group from 2010 for South Carolina and some other great ones uh, in history. So uh, drops was an issue. I'm not sure the guys really lived up to the billing, if you will, for whatever reason. You know, Will Muschamp cited the SEC media days uh, last week. The Gamecocks, I think, finished with 20 or 21 drops last season, which was a huge number. I mean, there was a three, four week spam where it really felt like South Carolina was having trouble catching the football. But overall, a solid group for the Gamecocks in 2018. Expect more of the same this year. Let's meet the wide receivers coming into the 2019 season. I'm just going to go down the line here because there's a lot of them. Uh, senior Brian Edwards, junior Shy Smith, sophomore Josh Van, sophomore Ortre Smith, senior Chavis Dawkins, redshirt freshman Darius Rush, junior Randricus Davis, sophomore Chad Terrell, junior Bailey Hart, sophomore Jay Yurick, redshirt freshman. Bailey Rogers and redshirt freshman Trey Atkins. Um, the most approved for me out of these guys, uh, and I've talked about him a lot this offseason, is going to be Shy Smith, the junior. Um, we've all talked about, and to me, again, I've said many, many times, not like a broken record, one of the biggest storylines for me coming into the season is who can fill the shoes of Debo Samuel? Who's that guy that's going to step up and make the big play when South Carolina needs it? Because I talked about on the podcast before that. You know, we had Perry Orth on the show. I've talked to Perry Orth before on the show. And he, he talked about the difference between, you know, when he first got there in 2013 and even 2014 versus 2015, his last year, and why guys weren't making plays. And there's two types of guys. There are guys that want to make the play. They really, they want the ball to come to them. They embrace that moment. They want to make the play. And then there are times where you don't have any guys like that and everybody's looking around for who's going to make that play. We obviously know last year Debo Samuel was the guy that wanted to make that play, who was going to make that play. And Sha Smith and really all the other receivers have made plays before in their, in their careers at South Carolina. But for Shai Smith, this is a big year in the sense that I think he is the, the most capable guy in the sense of someone to truly fill the shoes of Debo Samuel, his versatility, what he did. But can Shai Smith be that guy? You know, it's different to have the skill set. We can talk about that he plays a similar type of game as Debo, has a similar skill set as Debo, is a guy that can do the things, has the potential, but until he's put in that situation where South Carolina's looking to him to make that play, you're not sure how he's going to react. So to me, I think it's a huge season for him. Obviously, I think he's set for a breakout year, a guy a year ago that had uh, just under 700 receiving yards, I think around four touchdowns or so. I think he's a guy that could lead the Gamecocks and catch his yards and touchdowns. It would not surprise me. Listen, I undisputed Brian Edwards is the number one target, which I'm going to get to in just a second. But to me, I think Shai Smith could kind of be the go-to guy in this offense, if you will. I really do think 
he could fill in nicely and be the playmaker the Gamecocks are going to need to replace Debo Samuel. So to me, Shai Smith with the most to prove just because I simply believe there are a lot of expectations on Shai Smith, but for good reason because I think he does have the ability to fill in that role. Um, I just mentioned him. The best overall to me, though, it's pretty simple, is Brian Edwards. Um, decided to come back for his senior year, obviously, which was a huge boost for this Gamecocks offense. Um, it'll be an interesting year for him just because this will be his first year truly being the number one target, although his comments from SEC Media Days and everything you, we've all heard from him is he actually said he plays his game as a number one, and he really does carry himself that way, to be honest. When you, when you watch Brian on the field, I feel like he carries himself as a number one, but... Uh, you know, his first year being the number one target, how does he react to that? What do his stats do? Because he was very good last year, like I mentioned. Had a 846 yards, seven touchdowns. Those are not shabby numbers at all. Um, a big-bodied guy, you know, a really big year for him also for the NFL draft because I do believe Brian Edwards is a guy that with a solid year could be taken in the top three rounds, especially maybe a second rounder, maybe even first if he has a huge year. I'm not sure. But uh, obviously, I think the best overall, when you just look at a well-rounded wide receiver, what he brings to the table, he's the, he's the best overall in the sense he's also the most dependable. I think Gamecock fans know what they're going to get out of him. Another great big-body wide receiver. Brian Edwards has the opportunity and probably will set all the records, all the receiving records for Carolina, um, and has had a fantastic career in Garnet and Black. So to me, it's no doubt Brian Edwards the best overall receiver amongst this group. Um, to me, the season will be successful if two things happen. Number one, you have to eliminate the drops. Um, I don't really have the number. You know, I thought about less than 10 drops would make it a successful season, but I don't really know what to put that number at. But you simply have to eliminate the drops, especially the back-breaking drops that kill drives, that are touchdown passes. Again, Jake Bentley catches a lot of the criticism and the flack for how what things are things that happen, but... His receivers, there was a couple weeks span where his receivers certainly did not help him at all last year. So the, the, the receivers have got to be better in the sense of catching the football. And also the season will be successful if finding a replacement for Debo Samuel. You've got to find that playmaker, that go-to guy. And I've talked about before, it may not just be one guy. It may be a couple of guys. It may be a receiver and a tight end. It may be a running back. Who knows? But I think with the... With the replacement for Debo, it's most likely going to be a wide receiver, and somebody out of that group needs to step up. If it's not Shy Smith, maybe Josh Van breaks out. Maybe Ortre Smith has a breakout year after coming off an injury. So eliminate the drops, find the replacement for Debo Samuel, find the guy that can go make plays for you. Those are the two biggest things for me. I think if the Gamecocks do that, it'll be a very successful year. Uh, overall grade for this unit for me, it's funny. I was taking a look back at last year. I gave last year's unit an A+. Plus which that unit was good. Don't get me wrong. With Debo leading the way, that unit was good. But I think A-plus maybe was a little bit aggressive. Um, I'm giving this one a B-plus. I really thought about giving them an A-minus, but I want to see them prove it first. I want to see a guy like Shai Smith prove it. I want to see a guy, how is Josh Van's development? How, how is Ortre Smith coming off the injury? Can Randricus Davis and Chavis Dawkins have their best years as Gamecocks? Guys that have been kind of teetering on that contributing but not getting a ton of playing time. You know, there's some young guys. Can Darius Rush, Chad Terrell, can those guys step up and make some plays? I honestly, and I've talked about this before, I think this receiving core could be as good, if not better, than last year just from top to bottom, especially if they can stay healthy. Because, again, I, I thought last year's was good, but I, I think this year's, and it's not getting talked about at all because they don't have the explosiveness of a guy like Debo Samuel uh, who has now just signed his contract with the uh, San Francisco 49ers, who's a rich man. Congrats, Debo. But um, th they don't have that big play explosive guy that's going to get everybody talking. But I think top to bottom, this could be a better wide receiver corpse than we had a year ago. So overall, B+, plus, teetering on that A mark. But I think you got to go prove some things. Again, a guy like Shaw Smith, Brian Edwards is a true number one. Um, a couple guys coming back from injury and coming back this year, stuff like that. So very intrigued. Again, B+, plus overall for my grade. But I I'm very excited about the wide receiver core this year. Uh, very, very excited about the wide receiver core um, and what they bring to the table. All right, let's get into some questions. You guys left a couple of questions on Instagram, so I'll get into these. Palmer King 14 asks, who will be the X-Factor wideout? Talked about it already. To me, the X-Factor wideout is going to be Shai Smith. I just think with his game, he is primed set for a breakout year. Again, I it would not shock me in the slightest if he led the Gamecocks in catches and yards, if nothing else. I, I think maybe Brian Edwards will be your red zone target, but... If nothing else, out of catches, yards, and touchdowns, it would not shock me if Shai Smith led up two out of those three categories. It just would not shock me. So I think Shai Smith is the X-Factor wideout this year. Um, cut of gentlemen, who's Bentley's go-to guy this year? Again, it's kind of the same question, I feel like, as far as X-Factor go-to guy. 
But I think that's a tough one to answer in the sense that I think Brian and Shy will both be go-to guys. Um, and then the wild card to me is Ortre and Josh. I mean, how much is Josh Van developed again? And how is Ortre coming off injury? Because Ortre Smith was really, really good before he got hurt. He was phenomenal. So if he can stay healthy, I think he could play a big part in this offense and probably a bigger part than maybe we're all expecting. But the go-to guy, it's, it's going to be, I think, you're going to have a 1A, 1B situation with Brian and Shy Smith. Um, a dot Bruce 78. What role will Jay Yurick play? Very interesting question here. And I think it's something that um, is to be seen. I mean, we really don't know yet, right? I mean, Jay Yurick moving from quarterback to wide receiver. Obviously, everybody's very excited because of how he looked in the spring game, which I'll admit, I thought he looked really good. He's very athletic. How much is he realistically going to play? I mean, I don't know. It's hard to answer that because I don't want to take too much away from a spring game where it is live, but you're not truly going up against the ones. And I don't know. It's hard to take anything concrete away from a spring game. But if nothing else, Jay Yurick's got athleticism. Jay Yurick is athletic enough to play the position. And I mean, who knows? Who knows what he could do? I mean, if he impresses in camp, gets some reps, you never know what can happen. But uh, I expect Jay Yurick right now, if I had to guess, he's going to be the sixth or seventh wide receiver on the depth chart. And that might, you know, no offense, that might even be stretching. I don't know. We'll see. Um... Last question, Matt Pack underscore aha, how many drops this year? Great question, Matt. Hopefully the answer is zero. I would say, again, the goal is less than 10. If you can have less than 10, I think it's a pretty good year. I mean, obviously the lower the number, the better. You got to eliminate the drops. You got to cut down on the drops from a year ago. They, they were just, and, and the, the drops last year, too, seemed to come at the worst, absolute worst time for Carolina when they, I think of the Texas A&M game specifically, Debo Samuel dropping a long one that would have been a touchdown. I mean, just it came in situations like that where it could have changed games for South Carolina, and it led to a lot of the criticism being put on Jake Bentley. I mean, I literally remember last year people talking about Jake Bentley doesn't throw a very catchable ball. I mean, that was seriously a thing we were all saying because receivers were dropping passes, and people were just trying to put the blame somewhere. So, um yeah, I mean, hopefully zero. I think under 10, though, is a very achievable number and something this game this Gamecocks receiving core has to do to be successful this year. So that's going to do it for me. Appreciate you guys tuning in. If you haven't done so, go check out the Spurs Up Show. Episode 115 dropped this morning. Uh, I previewed the 2019 defensive unit and also Corey Miller, former Gamecocks linebacker and defensive end, nine-year NFL veteran, took his time to come on the show. It was a fantastic interview. Went really in-depth with his career, his son's recruitment, playing in the NFL, Joe Morrison, you name it. Ton of stuff. Ton of stuff. I think over an hour long interview. So really, really good stuff. Other than that, though, appreciate you guys tuning in. We're all counting on the days of kickoff. I know I am. I know you guys are probably sick of hearing me talk about it. And I'm kind of getting, I'm, I'm ready for them to spot the damn ball. So, um, but appreciate you guys tuning in. We'll continue the position unit previews next week. Got some exciting stuff as well for you guys to stay tuned to. Some really, really big stuff coming up. Obviously, my move to Columbia is coming up, which is going to be a game changer as far as there's going to be new content coming. Um, going to be dropping that in the next couple weeks. But until then, appreciate you guys tuning in. Talk to you soon. Thanks.